So at every single Democratic Party debate, there's a moment where Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg, they kind of go back and forth and they attack one another. And at that last debate, Amy Klobuchar kind of bodied Pete Buttigieg. And this time, he tried to pay her back. And you can just see it on Amy's face. She was done with Pete Buttigieg. And I think that all of us are just irritated with him and fed up at this point because he's so fake. He represents nothing. He's willing to say and do anything to get elected. And I, I like... We're sick of it. So Amy Klobuchar, like she really is all of us in this clip that I'm about to show you because she is tired of Pete Buttigieg's bullshit. So for whatever reason, he decided to jump in in that moment where she was asked about, you know, forgetting the Mexican president's name. Um, and she was not happy with that. Take a look. You're staking your candidacy on your Washington experience. You're on the committee that oversees border security. You're on the committee that does trade. You're literally in uh, part of the committee that's overseeing these things. And we're not able to speak to literally the first thing about the politics of the country you, to ourselves. Are you trying to say that I'm dumb or are you mocking me here, Pete? I'm I saying that you shouldn't trivialize I made that an error. People sometimes forget names. I am the one that has, number one, has the experience based on passing over 100 you, bills. It, if I could respond, this was a pretty big quick, allegation. Quick, He's basically saying that I don't have the experience to be president of the United States. I have passed over 100 bills as a lead Democrat since being in the U.S. Senate. I am the one, not you, that has won statewide in congressional district after congressional district. And I will say, when you tried in Indiana, Pete, to w run, what happened to you? You lost by over 20 points to someone who later lost to my friend Joe Donnelly. So don't tell me about experience. What unites us here is we want to win, right. and I think we should put a pre proven winner in charge of the ticket. This is, a race for this is a race for president. If winning a race for Senate in Minnesota translated directly to becoming president, I would have grown up under the presidency of Walter Mondale. This is different. And the reason that I think we need to talk about Washington experience is uh, that we should ask what that experience has led to. Experience is, and certainly tenure is not always the same thing as judgment. If we're going to talk about uh, votes okay, in the Senate in you know, Washington, let's, let's talk, talk about, about it. Let's talk about the major policy. Next question is for no, no, no. my answers. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Thank you. Are you trying to say that I'm dumb or are you mocking me here, Pete? That was tense. <laughs> that was tense and I would not want to be one of Amy's staffers uh, after that debate. Yikes. Um, now, look, I'll, I'll say this. I don't believe that she forgot the Mexican president's name. She could have just said AMLO, but like... I don't think this is disqualifying. This isn't the biggest deal ever. Sure, it's, you know, a rookie mistake. It kind of shows oh, you haven't done your research, especially when you're being interviewed by Telemundo and you have our southern neighbor who they're probably going to ask you about because we're going into the Nevada caucus and you're going to need to demonstrate that you know about, you know, Mexico and the United States' relationship. We're at a minimum, you know, just you've done a little bit of research, um, quick Google search, but um it's still not disqualifying, and the way that Pete Buttigieg hammered her, like, you could tell she was really not having it. And um, before I get to my next clip, I just gotta play this, because <laughs> Pete Buttigieg started to speak Spanish, and her response... It was just, it was literally perfect. A los soñadores hay que decir que este país es tu país también. Gracias. Everyone was as perfect. I wish everyone was as perfect as you, Pete. I love it. <laughs> um, Amy Klobuchar, you know, she has that inner Karen. And if she just unleashed that Karen at every single debate, she would be unstoppable. Because we're all Karens when we hear Pete Buttigieg. I have the urge to speak to his manager and, you know, get someone to tell him to shut the fuck up because he's just, he's, he's just grating on my fucking nerves. And I just, like, I don't have this reaction usually to people um, because, like, I, I, like I'm self-aware, right? I know that my voice is relatively annoying and nasally. Like, we all know that we're not perfect, but there's something, like, about Pete Buttigieg that's so special, and I think it really stems from his fakeness, but for Amy Klobuchar to really, like, 
be visibly frustrated. Like, even though Pete Buttigieg isn't necessarily wrong, I'm still kind of vibing with Amy Klobuchar because it's just like you want to tell him to shut the fuck up. And in this next clip, like, if she had a binder on that podium, she would have thrown it at his fucking face, literally. Because there were times where it looked like she was going to physically assault him, like slap him. And the clip that I have doesn't necessarily demonstrate that because as he's talking, you can kind of see her getting more and more anger, uh, angry. But in this clip, it does show how, you know, she she's just, she's all of us. She's fed up with him. If, Thank if, you. You're Thank you. Your, if you're going to run based on your record of voting in Washington, then you have to own those votes, especially when it comes to immigration. You voted to confirm the head of Customs and Border Protection under Trump, who was one of the architects of the family separation policy. You voted to make English the national language. Do you know the message that sends in as multilingual a state as Nevada to immigrants? You have been unusual among Democrats, I think the Democrat among all of the senators running for president, most likely to vote for Donald Trump's judges who we know are especially hostile to dreamers and to the rights of immigrants. Now, in South Bend, it was not always easy to stand up in a conservative place like Indiana on immigration, but we delivered. Yes. Everyone that's was that's as perfect. Have a shot. I wish everyone is, was as perfect as you, Pete, but let me tell you what it's like to be in the arena. And number one, do the math. If my friend Andrew Yang was up here, that's what he'd say. In fact, I have opposed, I uh, have not supported two thirds of the Trump judges. So get your numbers right. And I would add one more thing. I have been in the arena. You, Ted Kennedy, he had made a pretty big allegation against me again, and I think I should have a right to respond. I'm stating he the facts had, because these are votes that you Ted took, Kennedy, and those votes I, set you alone among the Democrats is, running for president. Yes. No other de is it true or is it false that no other Democrat First of all, from the it Senate is running what for you've president said about voted the judges right. are false. You are comparing me to two colleagues up here on the stage, and you are forgetting well, one thing. I would say thing. anybody who ran oh. for president this cycle, Senator you know Harris, what, Pete, Senator if Booker, you could saw let through me this. finish since I've been in the arena. Ted Kennedy asked me to work on the first immigration bill. We were able, with President Bush, to at least get that bill to a vote. I'm sorry, but Senator Sanders actually opposed that bill, and I worked on it. And if we had gotten that bill done, there would have been a path to citizenship for so many people. Then I worked on the 2013 bill. I'm actually so right. proud Good of going. the work I've done on immigration reform. And you know what? You have not been in the arena doing that work. You've memorized a bunch of talking points and a bunch of things. But I can tell you one thing. What the people of this country want, they want a leader that has the heart for the immigrants of this country, and that is me. You know, maybe so leading a diverse city that was facing ruin doesn't sound like the arena to you. I'm used to senators telling mayors that senators are more important than mayors, but this is the arena too. You don't have to be in Washington to matter. Listen, I can't stand Pete, but I have to admit that he is kind of right here about her record. Um, but I did like when she said, you've memorized a bunch of talking points. You haven't put in the work. And, you know, I like that, but it's kind of true for Amy as well. So, like, these exchanges, when they take place, it's difficult for me to root for either of them because I, I hate them both so much. But I think that over the course of the last month or so, Amy Klobuchar has become more favorable as she's attacked Pete Buttigieg more for me because I, I absolutely, I can't stand him. He's smug. He is an elitist. He's just, he's the worst, right? He's the worst. Uh, he's a rat. So, um, and call me a Bernie bro. Don't give a shit. Look, <laughs> I like this portion of the debate because I want them to keep taking shots at each other because they know that one has to take the other down because they're both kind of eating into each other's leads, right? Back in the New Hampshire primary, they were neck and neck. So if one of them were out, the other could possibly have had enough votes to beat Bernie Sanders. But maybe that's not the case. Maybe, you know, that person who supported Amy Klobuchar after the last debate maybe would have went for Elizabeth Warren or Joe Biden or even Bernie Sanders. We, we can't say for sure because voters aren't as ideological as we'd like to believe, even though they do care about policy. But um, yeah, these are both really fake politicians. And I think that one thing that showed us, um, that revealed to us about them at this debate, that was revealed to us, if you will, is that when they both go off, off script, they have no way of rebounding if they're attacked and they don't have like a specific line memorized to respond to a particular attack 
Like, they, they just, they flounder. They don't know how to respond. They flail. And you saw that at this debate. Like, when Elizabeth Warren called out Mayor Pete's Medicare for All who wanted as raising prices, you could see he got, like, visibly flustered. His face turned red because he, he had no scripted response to that. So he can only sound smart if he's rehearsed it a million times in front of a mirror. And Amy Klobuchar is the same way. So when you kind of knock her off of her balance there and you start calling out her record, you bring up things that she wasn't anticipating, then she doesn't know what to do. She starts like, you know, trembling in anger at Pete Buttigieg. And I get it. He's irritating. But I mean, you have to. This is why you need to be more organic and just acknowledge that we're all human beings. Like you don't have to memorize everything. You don't have to come in with a script. Just talk, and maybe a couple of times during the debate you'll stumble stumble over your own words, like I just did. Maybe a couple of times during the debate you won't seem as articulate as you want to be because this is an exhausting event. But that's still going to come across better than if you just rehearsed the entire time and you're thumb pointing because we fucking hate. That nobody wants to see that. This isn't the 1990s anymore. We've moved past the rehearsed politicians. We are now in the Donald Trump era. And just be a human being. Like, if you can prove to us that you're a human being, and sometimes you get angry, sometimes, you, you know, you don't have the right words for a particular situation or argument, that's just human, right? You're not perfect. No politician is perfect. But showing us your flaws, I think that will humanize you more than they think, but they don't want that because they think it's just going to be perceived as weakness. But either way, like, I've talked too long. What is it? Uh, we're at, like, eight minutes in. I've talked too long about Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar. And I'm going to end the video because I can only focus on them for so long before I start to lose my mind.